If you're a hardcore competitive gamer and want to improve your aim, make sure you dial this number on your screen. Now for those who know, you know. But in all seriousness, in this video, which has been sponsored by BenQ, we'll be looking at Diac Plus technology and to see how it features in the BenQ Zowie XL2566K, a Full HD 24.5 inch 360Hz TN panel. So jumping straight in, let's cover what Diac actually stands for. Dynamic Accuracy, and is a technology that's been developed by the manufacturer in order to improve motion clarity. This means that you're trying to replicate CRT-like performance, but on an LCD screen, which is hampered in terms of how it actually displays its image. There is actually a quite interesting breakdown on the manufacturer's website that you might want to check out. Links will be down in the description below. Now in real world terms, it means that you'll be able to see your enemies clearer in comparison to while using the monitor without the technology enabled. Therefore, Diac or Diac Plus effectively gives you a little bit of an extra competitive edge, even on a 360Hz TN panel. Indeed, while using this monitor and panning around quite vigorously on an offline server and looking at bots, I was able to note that there was a little bit of extra clarity while looking at my enemies. While in comparison, when I had the technology disabled while running still at full HD 360 hertz, I noticed that there was a little bit of extra trailing and indeed that motion clarity wasn't exactly pinpoint accurate. Now to further emphasize the point, you can see the UFO ghosting test. And while the normal overdrive modes provide good motion clarity, you can see that with the Diac Plus technology enabled, the UFO becomes a lot more clearer. And yet again, this translates as to how you would be perceiving the UFOs or indeed, let's say your enemies in a game. Now it is worth pointing out that Diac Plus, unlike its sibling Diac, does not actually have limited brightness controls and therefore is an absolute game changer because unlike some of the alternatives out there on the market, Diac Plus can actually be operated at any sort of brightness levels. The only consideration that you should have is that there is strobing technology that is being utilized over here in order to provide you bettered motion clarity. So as a result, it's no longer a flicker-free monitor when using said technology. A worthwhile consideration if, of course, you have sensitive eyes or indeed want to have a flicker-free experience. Now, while that's all very impressive, for hardcore competitive gamers, another extremely important factor is input lag. Now I can safely say from my objective test that with and without Diac Plus technology, the input lag was recorded at a stonkingly low one millisecond, which is effectively like a CRT. Indeed, you're getting CRT input lag on an LCD screen, which is absolutely mind blowing. Therefore means that with Diac Plus technology, not only are you getting better motion clarity, you're also not hindered in terms of the overall peak luminance, but you're also getting the same sort of input lag as if the technology was fully disabled. However, it is worth considering that on this BenQ XL2566K, you cannot run Diac Plus technology simultaneously with adaptive sync technologies, such as Nvidia G-Sync or AMD FreeSync. Which actually brings me on to said VR technologies, and in my case, with my RTX 3080 while connected over DisplayPort, I had no flickering issues or indeed black screen problems while running the Nvidia Pendulum demo. Therefore, I was able to benefit from a tear-free gaming experience, of course without the motion clarity technology enabled. Now personally, as a hardcore competitive gamer myself, I always have said technologies disabled. So therefore it doesn't actually bother me in the slightest that the two technologies do not work in tandem because I do not want to cap my frames, nor do I want to incur any sort of added input lag because of these technologies running in the background. So aside from this, what about when it comes to the overall response time? Well here, with the overdrive mode set to off, the average initial time, which you can see at the bottom left hand side of your screen, was recorded using the OSRTD tool at 4.52 milliseconds. Now if we switch to the premium mode, you can see this drops down to a stonkingly low 1.71 milliseconds. 
equally on the high mode, which is the mode that I would personally suggest due to the reduced RGB overshoot, which you'll be able to see towards the middle of your screen, the average initials time still sits at a stonkingly low 1.72 milliseconds meaning that this monitor is indeed very much tuned for hardcore competitive gamers. Now you have also got a AMA mode that you can customize on the XL2566K and you can see here with the AMA ramped up all the way to its maximum level of 30, the average initial time sits at an even lower 1.44 milliseconds. But do bear in mind that the RGB overshoot, which you can see towards the middle of your screen, is a lot more red in comparison to, for example, the high mode preset, which again is the one that I would actually side towards. Now bringing back that UFO ghosting test, you can see how the different overdrive modes affect the inverse ghosting. And indeed you'll be able to notice a little bit of extra inverse ghosting on the AMA30 mode in comparison to, for example, the recommended high mode. Now it's also further impressive that the Diac Plus technology can be used in tandem with the different overdrive modes. So therefore you can customize the overall visual experience to your liking and also benefit from that increased motion clarity. Now if you had a keen eye you might have noticed that all these tests were conducted at the max refresh rate of 360Hz. And indeed Diac Plus does run at Full HD at 360Hz, meaning that you do not have to downscale your monitor to run at let's say 240Hz. However, it is worth considering that if you do want to run the max refresh rate and resolution of said monitor, you will have to be plugged in via DisplayPort, because the HDMI 2.0 ports will limit you to Full HD at 240Hz instead. Now hopefully all of this information has been helpful in order for you to get the objective data that you might have required with the XL2566K, at least of course when it comes to gaming performance and when it comes to how Diac Plus technology can affect your overall motion clarity. But what about when it comes to the other features? Well this monitor operates a 24.5 inch Full HD 360Hz TN panel. And while using the normal mode preset that was selected through the OSD, I noted via my calibrators a gamut coverage of 93.5% and a gamut volume of 102.8%. You can see below how it compares to the sRGB standard. The average delta E sat at 3.31 and a maximum of 5.96. Tested contrast ratio was 1004 to 1, with the measured white point at 6951 Kelvin at 100%. You can see below also how it compares to the 2.2 gamma graph. Now past this we have got the monitor's brightness which was recorded at 370 nits. With Diac Plus technology you can see that it does drop very marginally but it's still pretty high at 293 nits. It also has good range dropping all the way down to 47 nits. Here is also the brightness uniformity of the tested panel and equally the backlight bleed on this TN panel at different angles. So it gives you an idea of to how you'd be able to use this monitor in different sorts of scenarios. So past all these tests you might also want to consider some of the other features. And here you have got a sturdy stand that provides you height, tilt, pivot and swivel adjustments. All of which are certainly appreciated allowing you to get the best sort of ergonomics. On that note, you have also got a smaller base, at least in comparison to other BenQ Zowie monitors. Therefore meaning that if you have your keyboard placed in a more vertical fashion, and yes, don't ask why, because I don't get it either, you'll be able to actually use this monitor a little bit more comfortably. Now aside from this, within the box you'll also find some shaders that you can place on the left and right hand side of the monitor, allowing you to focus a bit more on your game if for example you might be a little bit distracted from your surroundings. Speaking of which, if you have had a long gaming session or simply want to protect the monitor, there's also a cover that can be placed around it. Yet again, this is also included within the box. Now equally you will also find the 5-way S-Switch, a small little puck and allows you to have quick access to the monitor's settings. Indeed the OSD can also be accessed via physical joystick button found behind the monitor. This will give you a plethora of different options to play around with and indeed adjust certain settings such as Diag Plus, Adaptive Sync Technologies and for example the Overdrive modes. Now to add to that you have also got the Excel settings to share software. 
which means that you can share your own monitor settings with your friends or family which have got an appropriate BenQ monitor or equally download your favorite one from the internet. So there we have it. Hopefully this video has been informative and has given you all the information you need to know on the BenQ Zowie XL2566K and further has given you a bit more insight on Diac and Diac Plus. I'd be curious to know if these technologies are of interest to you and furthermore what you make of this 360Hz TN panel. Let me know down in the comment section below. Of course, if you have liked this video, make sure you drop a like, subscribe and hit that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.